Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Martin of Tours as we celebrate the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Our Liturgy of the Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving around in a tent and in a tabernacle. <clears throat> Whenever I have moved around about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, 
I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went. And I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors. I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord.
Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcised by those who are called the circumcised, a physical circumcision made in, made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of, of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and all members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he 
had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious God, help me to preach in a way that is good news. Good news to the poor, the weak, the widowed, the lonely, the orphan, to those in all places and phases of life who are in any way distressed or vulnerable. Help me to preach in a way that honors and respects those who will suffer and maybe even die today for your gospel. Help me to preach in a way that seeks not my glory, but yours. Not the growth of this church, but the spread of your kingdom. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The divisions, suspicion, and hatred between Jews and Gentiles at the time of Jesus was profound. The wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile was real, and much of the anger that Jesus provoked in the religious authorities of his day grew out of his ministry with Gentiles. He touched them, he healed them, he taught them, he ate with them, he even used them as examples of godly living. One could make a case that it was the radical hospitality that Jesus showed to those outside the Jewish nation that led to his death. The divisions between Jews and Gentiles continued in the time after Jesus' death and resurrection. In the earliest decades of the church, there were bitter disputes regarding the place of Gentiles in the Christian community. Should Gentiles be accepted? Did they need to be circumcised in order to be baptized? What about Jewish dietary rules? Did Gentiles have to follow them? The discussions were intense. In the midst of the discussion, Paul even called Peter a hypocrite. In the letter to the Galatians, Paul wrote that he wished that those who insist on circumcision would mutilate themselves with a slip of their knife. Ouch. It is in the midst of these controversies that the letter to the Ephesians is written. Paul states that the dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile, circumcised and uncircumcised, has been torn down by the cross. 
that peace and reconciliation have been established by the death of Jesus. That Jews and Gentiles are now members of the one humanity, the one household of God. He taught that the ways of hostility and hatred have been replaced by a new and holy temple. That one new humanity, one new body has been born out of the blood of Jesus on the cross. One of the messages of today's scriptures is that in Christ, our unity, our common humanity, our one fellowship has already been established. Yet we know that because of sin, walls still stand and divisions still exist. Divisions related to age, gender, race, nationality, sexual orientation, religion. Sins of racism, prejudice, and bigotry still threaten us every day. At the heart of our life as disciples of Jesus is the call to overcome these hostilities, to be ministers of reconciliation. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to live as one new humanity. This was at the heart of discipleship in the time of Jesus and still is today. In the gospel, we see the return of the apostles to Jesus. He invites them to come away to a time of rest. Did you notice, though, that there's an odd gap in that reading? 19 verses are missing. Jesus is teaching the crowd, and then the gospel skips to the disciples landing at Gennesaret and mooring the boat. In the verses not read in the assigned gospel, Jesus sends the apostles across the lake. He sends them to the other side. He sends them to Gentile territory. Years ago, I learned from Ched Myers, a peace and justice theologian, that in Mark's gospel, Jesus is always sending the apostles over to the other side of the lake. If we plotted it out, it would look like a shoelace winding from side to side, stitching the sides together. When with the Jews, he's always sending them to Gentile territory. And just about every time they cross the lake, they face a storm. In the verses missing from today's account, the apostles face an adverse wind that prevented them from making any progress. In other accounts, as you know, there are storms. What Mark is telling us is that in the ministry of Jesus and his first followers, Jesus was trying to bring together Jew and Gentile, trying to bring together those who didn't like, who didn't understand each other. And even then, in the time of Jesus, it was a difficult and stormy endeavor. In one of the crossing stories, I'm sure you remember that in the midst of a storm, Jesus is asleep in the boat and the disciples cry out, don't you care that we are perishing? I believe that the work of reconciliation was and is some of the hardest work for disciples which is why the work of tearing down walls, the work of helping one new community, one new humanity to be born, the work of, excuse me, the work of ending hostility between peoples continues to our day. It is a work that is filled with storms and treacherous seas. At times we would rather not go. We would rather not try to cross the sea and work to stitch peoples together. But Jesus sends us. Our country, really the whole world, is in the midst of some pretty stormy seas these days. 
The discussions about equity, equality, voting, power, sexuality, the damage we've done to our planet, and many other things continue to swirl all around us. These are today's version of the issue the early church faced regarding Jew and Gentile. The walls of division and hostility today are very strong. But we are called to remember that in Jesus, these walls have been broken down. In Jesus, peace and reconciliation are giving birth to one new humanity. With Jesus as the cornerstone, we are to strive to tear walls down, to respect the dignity of every human being, and to live in love with all of our neighbors. That is our prayer, that is our hope. As Christians, that is our work. In these troubled times, I pray that we may show forth God's love in all we say and do. Amen. When you're ready and if you're able, I invite you to stand and to join in saying the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are Form 3, found on page 387 of your prayer book. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Rwanda. Remembering those on the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Church in Three Rivers and St. John's Church in Harbor Springs. In St. Martin's cycle of prayer, we pay, pray for Marion, RJ, Nancy, Penny, 
Jennifer, Tony, Faith, Eileen, and Gabriel. Loving God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. We pray for those discerning vocations to ordained or lay ministry for our vestry and for those who are seeking a deeper knowledge of God. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Skip, our assisting bishop, and for members of the standing committees of the Western and Eastern Michigan, for our partner dioceses and their bishops, Bonnie, Rayford, and Moises, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for Craig, the Bishop of this area Synod of the Evangel in, excuse me, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We pray for the diocesan canons missioner, Alan, Val, and Anne, and for the clergy associated with this parish, Mary, Pat, Rick, Mike, and Bill. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Gretchen, our governor, for our Congress and our courts. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for remember serving the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, community living options, serving the adults with development and physical disabilities and or mental illness, our eyeglasses ministry with the Lions Club, and all people and agencies who work to serve those in need. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, homes, and livelihoods due to, due to the devastating flooding in Germany, Holland, Belgium, and other countries in Europe. We pray for all who are aging, who find their bodies having more and more limitations. Give them peace and patience to accept the body's natural changes and give them joy and laughter with their loved ones and caregivers. We pray for all on our prayer list, Barb, Charlotte, Gabriel, Jenny, Joel, Shannon, Stacy, Lori, Jim, Jenna, Joanne, Sean, Judy, Mikkel, Tony, Corinna, Carol Ann, Christopher, Jeff, Mike, Sally, Becky, Michael, Ken, Sarah, Bud, Bruce, Lois, and RJ. For Wayne, Dana, and their family. And for those recently diagnosed with breast cancer who have asked for our prayers. Patty, Cares, Linda, Brenda, Nellie, Susan, Eileen, Verna, Dolores, Elaine, Willie, Pamela, Geraldine, Holly, Christina, April, Dorothy, Nancy, Pauline, and Sue, and for those whom we now name. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for Daniel, cousin of a parishioner. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints and martyrs who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us that we may delight to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. shall we respond to God's great love? We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And we shall love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen.
page 369. If you're able, please stand. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, skill, and will. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds, ye are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy. supper, he took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Rahab, Tamar, Ruth, Bathsheba, and Mary, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, 
one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated unless you're celebrating a birthday or anniversary and would like to come forward for prayer and a blessing. Seeing none, do any of you have any announcements for the good of the body? I just have one quick one. Uh, out by the shed, there are a number of items that were in the shed, and we would like them to have a new home. And so if you're interested in some hoses or a grill or any of those things outside the shed, there's even a couple of nice shovels and things like that. Uh, you can just take them with you or you can throw a little extra money in the collection plate to buy them or whatever, but we would like to have them have a new home. Please take them. <laughs> Please take them. Please take them. That's right. Thank you. I um, printed out an article from. Well, I'm not going to Steve wasn't either, but we won't tell him. What? We won't tell Steve he's not noisy. You couldn't hear me. Um, this isn't long. I, I printed off an article from um, the internet about a man who is totally, totally amazing. I put one on the bulletin board out there that you may want to copy or take it home and bring it back for those of you who don't um, use the internet. Uh, and otherwise you can find it on Western's Facebook. He was blinded when he um, interrupted a burglary in his home. Um, as an adult, and what he has done with his life is just totally, totally amazing, and it's worth reading. If anyone ever gives up hope because they have a physical infirmity, this guy will turn you around. Did you see it? Thank you. Did you see it? it it's on Facebook. I, I posted it. In fact, somehow I posted it twice, but I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. When you're taking free things from in front of the shed, drop off your styrofoam in a big box in there. Uh, once a month, we take it to Cooper Township, and quarterly, we take it to Mayor's Riverfront Park uh, for a pilot recycle program they're doing. I think Steve is going to be our man this with this Mayor's Riverfront Park one at the end of July, but if anybody would like to help with that, um, there's always, uh, there may not be a lot to to do right here, but helping at the site at Mayor's Riverfront Park, helping people unload their styrofoam, getting it into the semi-truck that they have there. And that's on the 31st of July from, um, uh, I think it's morning, like nine, morning, nine, like nine, nine, to, nine to noon, nine to one, I think. Yeah. Nine to one. And there'll be an article in the newsletter on it. So, uh, and are you going to talk about the picnic? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, picnic today at Sharon and Judy's starts whenever you can get there after church, so noonish um, until whenever the last person gets out of the lake, I guess. Uh, <laughs> they said noon to six. Noon to six, sorry. Okay. No, okay. Anyway, and, um, if you have a dish to pass, that's great. If you don't, just come. It, it'll be a wonderful time for everybody. Um, thank you. And if you need directions, did Sharon end up putting a map out or I don't believe so okay we have the address if you have GPS yeah we can get you the address it's on Austin Lake right yeah we can talk you and talk you into it our Hansons live on the same street so and just talk to Bill about it <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Bill to do anything. He will be glad to do it. <laughs> <laughs>
Please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace and give you joy. The Lord's blessing be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. God.